Uh, my name is Stephanie Sibley, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Critical Care Medicine. Atrial fibrillation is a problem in intensive care patients. Uh, we see it quite frequently, so up to 20% of our patients get atrial fibrillation, and they have really bad outcomes. Even when you adjust for the severity of disease that they have um, and the type of disease that they have, they still have an increased mortality up to 30%. Uh, they also are at increased risk of stroke, which is one of the, the consequences of atrial fibrillation that we worry about in everybody who gets it. And it's increasingly more difficult to anticoagulate them because they get um, coagulopathy of critical illness. And so they're at increased risk of bleeding when we give them the medications that help prevent strokes. So what I'm proposing to do in this study, uh, which is a pilot project, a randomized control trial, is to try to prevent the atrial fibrillation from happening in the first place. And that is something that people really haven't looked into too much in this particular population. Uh, and we're going to use a medication that's relatively safe uh, and cheap that's been used in cardiac surgery and thoracic surgery, which is magnesium. Uh, and so we're going to randomize ICU patients to either receive magnesium or placebo, which is going to be normal saline. And we're going to get them to wear a, a high fidelity monitor um, that detects atrial fibrillation with really good sensitivity uh, and we're going to follow them for at 14 days uh, and then again we're going to follow them up at 90 days in a year so we're going to capture some of the long-term outcomes as well. We're specifically looking as our primary outcome for the development of atrial fibrillation um, but we're going to assess all sorts of things in these folks uh, like uh, their uh, mortality, the time that they spend in the ICU, the time that they spend on a ventilator, the time that they require organ support like for things dialysis um, and we're going to look and see how many strokes they have uh, or TIAs. I think that this is a really important study. We did a survey of intensivists all around the world, and we have found that people are doing this um, with no sort of good evidence in a critical care population, a general critical care population. Uh, and so this study is kind of a winner either way. If we do show that magnesium reduces the amount of atrial fibrillation, if it works well as a prophylactic measure, then everybody can start doing this. Magnesium is quite a safe uh, and inexpensive medication, and it could really help with some longer term outcomes. Uh, if it doesn't work, then we can get all those people who are doing this to stop and save a bunch of money. And I think about the Choosing Wisely campaign and how we can uh, direct um, the resources that are going into this away uh, if it doesn't really work. Um, and, you know, even if it doesn't reduce the amount of atrial fibrillation that people get, the I think that there may still be benefit when people get their atrial fibrillation in terms of their rate and how easy it is to actually cardiovert them out of that rhythm. Uh, so there's lots of exciting things that could happen with this and we're going to try to follow people longer term, which is also a limitation of uh, a lot of the studies that have been done. Uh, so we're going to do follow up at 90 days and a year. Um, and see what people's outcomes are uh, as they leave the ICU and, and progress onward from there. <laughs> I'd love to give thanks to SEMO for the um, innovation funds and the opportunity to uh, get this pilot part of this project started here at uh, Kingston Health Sciences Centre. Uh, and I would especially like to give uh, a big shout out to the research team. Um, probably first and foremost, my project manager, Miranda Hunt, uh, who has worked tirelessly to get this project up and get it ready to get going. Um, my co-investigators, uh, Dr. Uh, John Muscadari, Dr. David Maslov, Dr. Gord Boyd, Dr. Francois Lamontagne, um, and Dr. Andrew Seely. And uh, to the Canadian Critical Care Trials Group, who uh, have not only endorsed this study, but who have uh, supported me and given me lots of feedback um, with respect to grants and the protocol. And so I'm very grateful for all of their help. Music